nakshatra here. Hey, have you ever seen humans with tails and three eyelids? <laughs> nope, can't say I have either. But it sure sounds like something straight out of a low-budget horror movie. Oh, sorry, I gotta take this. Oh, hello, how are you? What? I'm wrong? They're out of a high-budget horror movie? No? Wait, well, no way. So you're telling me that we see these tail-bearing, three-eyed humans every day? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, I get it. Can I tell them this? Yeah, I better not mention the aliens. Yeah, you heard me, right? Not about the aliens, about the humans with tails and three eyelids, and how you see them every single day. But we'll get to that in a minute. So, how's lockdown going for everyone? Because it's going great for me. I haven't gone out for four months and have been seeing only my parents for five. Also, what does the sun feel like? <laughs> to be honest, I kind of feel like I'm becoming a vestigial creature. Wait, wait, what does vestigial even mean? Well, According to my detailed and grueling research of 5 seconds, it's a small remnant of something that was once greater. Yup, that's pretty accurate on how most of us are feeling right now. Okay, 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 I've digressed long enough. Let's leave all the cringy jokes aside and get on with the science of this video. So let's talk about vestigial organs so that your brain doesn't become one. These are organs which no longer serve their original purposes. Folks, I did some digging. Your eyes will literally pop out if I tell you about one of them. Mm, yeah, that's a bit of a stretch, but it's still pretty cool. No, it's not your dying brain. It's not even your exerciseless muscles. It's been right in front of our eyes this entire time. I mean, in the corner of everyone's eyes. Yeah, that little pink thing. Folks, that's a vestigial organ. It is called the plica semilunaris. Wait, 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 don't click out yet. What makes it really cool is that it's actually the remnant of a nictitating membrane. Fancy talk for third island. These are mostly prominent in birds and some mammals. For them, it's kind of like a windshield wiper, keeping out dust and debris, aiding in vision, and keeping the eyes moist. Pretty handy, right? But in humans, not so much. Hence the term vestigial. But why have these stuck around if they are about as useful as a dirty gym sock? Now bear with me here, because this is going to get a bit more technical. Because to answer this question, we need to understand Charles Darwin's theory of natural selection. Basically, it's survival of the fittest. Traits that helped organisms survive in an environment are more likely to make it to the next generation. For example, giraffes with long necks are able to reach the leaves of trees, surviving longer than those with short necks to pass this long neck trait to the next generation. But as the environment changes, traits that were once useful may become harmful. These will be selected against, gradually disappearing from the population. But if a trait is not actively harmful, then it might not get selected against and stick around even though it isn't useful. Didn't get it? Well, so didn't I. But here's where our man with a tail comes in. Folks, we all have a tailbone. Or if you really want your friends to gawk at your knowledge, try coccyx. Now, scientists believe that once grasslands began popping up, our tail-bearing ancestors, apes, left their arboreal abodes, trees, and started walking on land. Their tails, which were pretty useful tarzaning all over the trees, now made them walk like toddlers wearing stilts. But individuals with mutated shorter tails, who were probably made fun of, now were living the high life, not tripping over like a five-year-old. They survived long enough to pass their short tails to the next generation, until 20 million years ago, when our external tails winked out of existence altogether. But 
the stubby tailbone still is very much there, probably because it's harmless, even serving as an anchor point for certain muscles. Now, I could go on about all the 86 vestigial human organs, but this video is long enough already and I've tired you long enough with my voice. I barely even scraped the surface on this fascinating topic, so I've left the links for the references I've used for this video so you can do some reading of your own. So folks, if you really want to see a human with a tail and three eyelids, go get up and look in the mirror. You will find one right there. Okay folks, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.